I also had um, Kelly Holmes. Um, I've always admired Kelly Holmes. Um, obviously, she's a double Olympic champion. Um, but we had a special moment with her um, when we played in the Commonwealth Games in 2010. And at the time, she was the president of the uh, Commonwealth Games England. And we had just lost um, the semi-final of the uh, triples event out in Delhi. And obviously really disappointed. We were holding game. We'd lost lost it on the last bowl of the game. And so we then had to go out and fight for, for a bronze medal. Um, didn't know at the time that Kelly Holmes was actually there watching us. Um, and bearing in mind she didn't know us, she came over to us and actually sort of said to us, look, girls, you know, you're not to let this moment get to you. You've you've worked hard to get here. I know how disappointed you are. Um, and she really, really picked us up. And I was just so touched that somebody like Kelly Holmes, who obviously knew how disappointed we were, could spare the time to come over to us and just give us that pep talk that we needed. Um, and she sort of said, you know, you've still got a chance to get a medal here and, and you make sure you go out and get it. And unfortunately we did. So no, I've never forgotten that from her. It's quite interesting that we've all picked the same sport actually, because um, <laughs> mine's Steffi Graf. Um, and I did think about Billie Jean King when I was thinking about who was probably my female sporting inspiration, but I'm not being rude ladies, but I'm a little bit younger than you. So um, I think Steffi Graf probably falls into my category because she was probably, well, she is the first, from my record, the first tennis player to achieve the Golden Slam by winning all the four major singles titles in one year, as well as the Olympic gold medal. Um, and, you know, for me, she was just growing up at a pinnacle of what female sport was like. And I think it's interesting that we have picked tennis because I think tennis is a sport that actually women are seen as, as very good athletes and equated to the men. And Billie Jean King's got a lot to answer for, for that, if I'm honest, really. Um, I, I played a bit of tennis myself when I was younger. Um, so, you know, I used to always think I was Steffi Graf when I was on the court. I tried to make the same noises anyway. But, um, yeah, Steffi Graf to me came through the sport, was amazing. Her and Martina Navratilova, you know, great, great women to look up to and inspire to be. Um, but yeah, tennis was probably the sport that I would pick out for my sport and inspiration. So, you know, I, I loved the game. Um, my dad at the time was the greenkeeper at Wigton Bowling Club. So um, Sunday mornings, me and my brother would be down helping dad, trimming the edges, collecting grass, putting the cuttings behind, ready for, you know, um, be made into some good compost and putting mats and jacks out and laying the green out ready for the next game. Putting strings on in those days. We used to put the strings, string the green for my dad, me and my brother. So it was just a huge part of our family life, really. And as you say, it's such a sport that you can associate socialising with as well, that it's it very much still is part of our family, Wickham Bowling Club. Um, and, you know, I often do wonder where, what would have happened or where I would have been if we hadn't had that in our life. So, yeah, family route, just like a lot of people talk about. Like these two lovely ladies, I mean, there's lots of highlights in my in my bowling career. I mean, one has to be when you play for England. You know, the first time you play for England is an absolute honour. And I was just so proud of myself to have achieved that. Um, but there's other things, too. You know, we were the probably my pairs partner and I were the first players to win wearing trousers. When the, the dress code changed for women, that actually helped encourage women into the game, which I think is really important. We felt quite brave. You know, we were sort of going against um, all the, the older players that were there that were sort of scowling at us as we went onto the green. So I felt quite honoured and brave. And, and that was a highlight looking back. I think we were sort of leading the way there. What What would your um, advice be to um, to uh... Uh, 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 women um, who, uh, uh, who uh, are thinking of, 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 of I'm not getting into bowls. Uh, and we'll go back to you, Mo, on that one. Um, I think just do it. Just do it. You know, whether whether you're 10 or whether you're 60, you know, it's a, it's a sport, I think, for all, for all ages, all abilities. Um, it gives a lot more than just competitive matches, like we were saying about the social side of bowls. Um, I think it develops young players. You know, I think the number of young players that have come through um, our pathway, that they tend to, to, to lead into, it helps them in their, their education, their employment. I think, you know, there's a lot to be learned from, from girls coming into the, into, into the sport of bowls. 
And I just think, just give it a chance. You know, if you've played sport before, if you want to transition into bowls, then try it. You know, what have you got to lose? We, we've said so many times, you know, bowls is accessible to, to, to everybody, um, all ages, abilities, um, that, that, you know, nothing is, is barred. Um, so, yeah, it's just a, a great social sport. And uh, within, you know, a few sort of uh, sporting goes, you'll be mixing with people in all walks of life. And, uh, yeah, it's just a, a great, great sport. So, yeah, I just say just just give it a go. You don't have to be particularly sporty to to be good at bowls, I think. And I just think we need to be encouraging more women and showing them the opportunities available in this sport. Like Sandy was saying about the social element, that's brilliant. You know, it gives them that that outlet where they can go and chat and meet with people. It helps their, their mental um, side as well. But, I, you know, I think we, knew, we need to be promoting the opportunity to get involved. There are lots of, of women that maybe haven't got partners anymore or never have partners that really need that social outlet. Like they need to go to the club, they help out, um, they actually give something back to society. And I think, you know, as well as that, it helps the youngsters coming through, you know, the juniors are learning life skills from what's going on in their clubs. So I just, I'm, I just don't know how we can actually get more women to play without actually promoting our sport and showing how, how much fun it can be, what the com competitive opportunities can be. Um, maybe we need to be looking at maybe different formats to make it simpler for those young mums that have got babies, work life, family life, homes to run, um, making it easier for them to come and play. I'm, I've got to say, Dan, it's, it's very easy and natural, I, I find, um, between the three of us. Um, Mo's done an absolutely outstanding job as the performance director. Um, she's very good at communicating, open communication with Sandy and I. We regularly catch up with each other. Um, sometimes it's just a chat, general chat out of season to see how we're all doing. It might be gathering thoughts or opinions about things. Um, equally, Sandy is you know, so well respected by the players. She's a natural leader. She's got a vast amount of experience and knowledge that, that's just banked up there to just tap into it any time. Um, and, I, you know, if I look at it as a three, you would never put the three of us together because we're very, very different. But I think we've got a, a huge shared skill set of being very strong women. Um, we're very highly organised individuals um, and we're not quiet. So we will speak up when we need to. Um, our meetings aren't quiet, like I say. We've got mutual respect for each other and there's a shared trust and a friendship as well. And, you know, from my point of view, when you spend a lot of time together, as we do throughout the Bulls season, it's really important that you like being with each other, um, which I think we do, the three of us, and we've got a shared love of white wine. So that usually helps as well. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we just all work really well together. Nick said we have to spend a lot of time together and we are all different individuals. But, you know, we've got the love of sport a, a, in our hearts and that's what we're doing it for. They're all voluntary roles. Um, and, you know, they take up a lot of a lot of our time, uh, you know, uh, we, we sort of bowl as well. And, um, you know, some of us have got some other full time education or part time education. So, it, you know, it's difficult. We've all got different skills. And I think um, that really, really helps to make us um, a team that we we genuinely get on with each other. We're all there for the exactly the same reasons. And it's to give something back to the for the good of the sport um, and we want it to work we want it to work for the teams that we manage um, and, and and that's basically what is what our aim is you know we want to do the best job that we can do uh, as I say we are all volunteers but we still just want to be the best we can be um, and uh, to have the best teams around us and I, and I think you know looking back over the last few years I, you know I think I'd like to look back and think that we've done a we've done a good job but I've also got to mention teachers in my life um, because I've had so many brilliant women teachers over my childhood that that's why I wanted to be a teacher. Um, they sort of were, again, role models that I looked to and thought, God, I just I need to be like you, you know, because to have children in the palm of your hand and them looking up to you and seeing those pennies drop when, you know, you teach them things is just the best feeling ever. Um, I probably can't not mention Sandy and Mo because I've always looked up to them all the time. Uh, you know, their insights and knowledge in this sport is just, you just can't buy it. So, that, you know, I, I do look up to them. 
But um, probably one person that I've not mentioned yet that has, has always stood strong in my life um, as a female role model, and I was really lucky enough to hear her speak once, is Jen Jessica Ennishill. So um, I was really lucky to hear her speak after the London 2012 achievements and to hear, you know, the pressure she went through as being a poster girl in the lead up to those Olympics, the, the pressures, the extremes she went to to prepare, the risk all the time of injury, you know, to put her body through what she did. And, you know, I always hope I'm described as a bit of an all rounder because um, I'll try anything. Um, there's a joke in school that I'm the fixer of everything. Um, mm -hmm. And I will try and have a go at anything, you know, whether it's a bit of DIY myself at home or, you know, it's sorting things out or whatever. And I see Jessica in sport as the all-rounder by being a heptathlete, being able to apply herself to all those different individual sports to me is just fantastic. And to hear her speak, if you ever get the opportunity, she is a very inspirational woman. I mean, Amy, like you say, Amy, you know, to, to, for her, for the length of her career and her involvement and, and the way she leads the players, she, she's a good leader. You know, people look up to Amy and I think she's she's absolutely fantastic for our sport. So as far as bowls players goes, you know, I don't want to mention too many because I'll get into trouble if I miss somebody that I should have mentioned. Um, but outside of the sport altogether, I met Claire Balding when we were at the Commonwealth Games. Um when the girls won the triples, um, no, that was in Glasgow when we met Claire, Claire Boarding. She took us back to the TV studios to do some interviews and she was an absolutely amazing character. She'd learned a lot about our sport in a short time. She spoke about it as if she'd been playing bowls all of her life. Um, she treated us like real top sports people, which was great because, you know, in her in her world, we were just minnows, but we didn't feel like minnows. We felt really important. And I, and I really admired her for that. I thought the way she she sort of led the whole interview, you know, was, was just amazing. And, you know, she she's just such a great character. Like I say, she, she sounded like she played bowls all of her life. Um, if anything, anything really, um, it goes the other way, Dan. So I I've just I regularly use bowls in my assemblies. So um, I did an assembly last Tuesday where I, my title of my assembly was Dare to Dream. And I did it about the World Championship um, Force. So um, I showed some images that I've had over my career of playing with Lorraine, leading Sophie um, as an England manager, of, of showing them come through their pathway that they've been on. And I've, I've been lucky enough to share that with them. You know, I roomed with Lorraine the, the first year I de debuted. So, you know, I've got to know those bowlers really well, you know. Um, so I showed them in their development going through the pathway of Bowls England and, and talked to the children about would, would they have dared to dream to get to where they've got to now, the pinnacle. And I actually played some clips um, off YouTube to the children um, of them winning the gold. And, you know, I, I, thankfully, my um, my school assemblies to 350 kids, they love Bowls now because they hear me talk about it. Um, so um, they were, you know, absolutely in awe of those four women. But I'm lucky that um, my school support me massively. Um, my head teacher has had a go, um, thought it was going to be easy before we went, but I took him down to try it one day and he, he only wanted three ends. He didn't want to play anymore because he realised he wasn't very good at it and he was he was a bit embarrassed, I think. But um, I've taken, you know, school clubs before down onto the Bowling Green. We're doing it again this summer. Um, and, you know, it's just that little opportunity, isn't it, where you can transfer. And I think it's really important for children to see your world, to see what you do, to see what your other life is, that it's not always Miss Bow. Um, and there's another side to you. So I think that's, you know, equally important. So, yeah. Superb. So can we, uh, will we see any rising stars from your school? I would uh, hope so, Dan. <laughs> You never know your luck. You never know your luck. <laughs> it was time for me to give something back to the sport. You know, I've gained a lot in the 39 years I've played bowls. I've been lucky enough to achieve uh, lots of things, but also just experience amazing friendships. So I think it's so important now that I do give a little bit back. Um, on the sort of negative side, it's it, I think Sandy's already touched on it. We are volunteers and, you know, I, I do get a little bit frustrated with social media world because sometimes comments on there can be kind of quite disheartening. Um, and at the end of the day, we are volunteers. We do give our time freely. We, you know, we we can all make mistakes, let's be honest. Um, and, you know, I think sometimes people just need to think twice before they hit the keyboard. Um, as I say to children, if you can't say it face to face, don't do it online, because that's what I think is what's really important that people need to remember. 
But um, that all quickly gets forgotten, if I'm honest, Dad, Dan, because when you walk out with your team, your England shirt on your back, the national anthem's playing, then you forget those miles that you've travelled on the M6 and the time that you've sat in the car and the negativity and all the emails that you've had to try and sort things out in between or meetings or late nights. Because for me personally, I didn't think this was possible, but I get more of a buzz from managing than I do from actually playing, um, which I genuinely didn't think was possible because um, you can't control necessarily what's going to happen on that green. You can do all the preparation. You can talk to the, the team. You can give them advice. You can give them knowledge. But I don't deliver that ball. And there's got to be an element of massive trust there when you say to them, go for it. And I think that's our biggest job as managers is to instill that belief into the team, which I hope we've done a lot of.